and let me tell you, you can never be wiser than God when God tells you something stay away from it I know people let me tell you ah, there's one of my dear daughters she was in her final year in uni and all her roommates were putting pressure on her how can you not have ah, you want to graduate you still be a virgin ah, ah, you are not ashamed let me tell you see Satan is so you know you know you just understand that it's a war of kingdoms Satan's agenda is so strong out there so they are making those of us doing the right thing ashamed of speaking the truth and standing for what is right so they put pressure on this girl that time you say you are a virgin ah, ah. she now finally decided she sleep with her boyfriend she planned valentine's day everything had sex with him a couple of months after she was sick found that she had hiv and she said she used condom that she used condom but condoms break don't they it's not man-made anything man-made can fail so when the Bible says avoid premarital sex, run, flee, run, flee. Final thing. Final thing that can be a blind spot, not picking from your spirit. And I'll say this because I feel like in this day and age, a lot of people are so focused on telling you is it if you are compatible, if your personalities are like this, if the, let me tell you, eh, somebody can look good, can tick all the boxes. But the person may just not be the right person. And the only way you can know is if you tap into your spirit. That's the only way you can know for sure. Someone can be everything you ever dreamed. All the list that you've written, he must be tall, dark, handsome. Even though I don't know who will now marry short, yellow, ugly. He will be all those things. He must have money. He must be a worker in church. Maybe, but he's not the one God planned for you. But how will you know if you don't tap into your spirit? How will you know if you don't check? So these days everyone makes it seem as if he must be this just check the boxes let me tell you you must still pray and the reason why you must still pray is because you are not like everyone out there in case you don't know you don't have a spirit you are a spirit because a lot of times that's what we think oh, you have it no you are a spirit that is the most that's your essence you are a spirit you have a soul you live in a body but your essence is that you're a spirit man and that means that you have the very nature of God that's what makes you like God you think God can never be stranded if God cannot be stranded why is because he's a spirit and you see marriage is also a spiritual thing marriage is more spiritual than it is physical if God created marriage and God is a spirit and marriage came from God that means it's spiritual so you cannot use your 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 flesh to make a spiritual decision marriage is not about we like each other we love each other marriage is about destiny marriage is about destiny is this the kind of person i want to spend the rest of my life fulfilling destiny with is this the kind of person i want to reproduce his kind because when you are marrying someone you're not just choosing a spouse you are choosing a parent for your children and a lot of times we will not think about that so even the bible tells you that beauty is vain charm is deceitful he said, but it is a woman who fears the Lord. That's the woman you should go after. How will you know a woman that fears the Lord if you don't fear the Lord? So you must still pick from your spirit. You must still come from your spirit. Listen, if you sow to, see, if you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption. No? If you, every time you want to make a decision, you do it from your flesh. Oh, this guy looks good. Mm, I think he can pay my bills. He can. When you enter that marriage, you will see dimensions you never thought about so as a Christian don't get carried away by what the world is doing you must do things God's way after you I mean we laugh about it now but those days you don't marry somebody you have not received yes you must still bring the God factor because it's God that still ends up doing it's God that still ends up blessing that marriage and that union and God will not bless what he did not put together so from today after you have checked all the boxes take time out and pray i miss the days of praying christians i don't know and these days now people are praying father do father do give me give me give me give me give me listen have a communion with god have conversations with him and say this person he be like saying fine no but god he eyes he inside because it's god that sees the heart god does not see the way you are seeing you are focused on the outside god says it's the heart i'm looking at so the person may be everything but what is his heart like 
So when it comes to marriage, don't make it a natural decision. Don't say, I'm a fine girl. See her childbearing hips. Wow. She can have childbearing hips and have no ovaries. You can't know. So in the end, you must still take time out and pray. It's not something you should take lightly at all. Who you are going to go the journey of life with is so vital. The person you marry has the ability to change the rest of your life.